Thank you, Mr. Acting Deputy President. Senator Sims. Thank you, Mr Acting Deputy President. I rise today to speak to the Higher Education Legislation Amendment Miscellaneous Measures Bill of 2015. Now, I say from the outset, uh, Mr Acting Deputy President, that there is much in this bill that uh, we believe to be good. The bill would extend the help loans to a subset of New Zealand citizens, as Senator Dastyari has said, who have been long-term residents here in Australia since they were children, providing pathways to an affordable qualification in the Australian tertiary education system for thousands. Now, this is a welcome change from the government, who only months ago were mute on Senator Carr's bill, which was put forward and, and would have achieved um, exactly the same objective. And my colleague uh, here in the Greens, Lee Rhiannon, at that time spoke in support of that bill and uh, the Greens are in support of that change. The bill would also end duplication in the reporting requirements that now exist in both TEXA and the PGPA Act. Although the Greens are often accused of being, uh, you know, adding so-called red or green tape, it has always been the policy of our party that we support only necessary regulation. And in the case before us today, the regulation is no longer necessary. So we do support Schedule 5. Perhaps one of the uh, nicest surprises is the increase in indexation for the Australian Research Council, which would not only see an increase in funding for the 2015-2016 period, but also the 16 and 17 financial years. It sees a, a funding uh, extended out into the forward estimates as well. That's a welcome development. It is pleasing to see the government slowly accepting the reality that you need a well-funded university research sector to power a modern knowledge economy. Indeed, the Greens have been calling for such an investment in universities for some time, for many years, because we know that if our economy is to transition away from the 19th century industries of coal and carbon, and move into a new era, a new era of advanced manufacturing, of information technology and of renewable energy, then we do need to put a robust public research program at its core. We need to unwind the series of cuts into the research sector, which go back as far as the Gillard Labor government in 2012, when the Sustainable Research Excellence Grants were slashed during the uh, MAIFO process. That was certainly a dark day for the uh, education sector in this country when the Gillard government came out swinging the uh, budget axe. We need to ensure that both our research block grants and competitive grants see an increase in overall funding. And we do need to stop hacking into our research organisations, organisations like the CSIRO. And we need to ensure that programs like the National Collaboration Research in, uh, Infrastructure Strategy aren't held hostage by government so that scientists and researchers have the program stability they need to do their jobs with confidence. And we need to ensure that thought bubbles and captain's picks, you know, things like this uh, Longborg Consensus Centre, which went over like a lead balloon in my home state of South Australia, um, we need to ensure that those kind of ideas are off the table and never see the light of day again. So while I do commend the government's actions today and the Greens do support increases in funding for the ARC, it is insufficient to the task that confronts us today. We hope that the government will come back again with a far more comprehensive program to back up their innovation nation rhetoric. And um, you know, what better way to be innovative, what better way to be um, flexible and uh, agile than to actually listen to the community and uh, provide appropriate funding for research, something for the government to think about. However, despite all of the benefits that have been identified, the Greens do have some reservations with this bill. It's disappointing to see the inclusion of the Torrens University as a Table B provider. That's a new development in education. Torrens University, as many in the chamber will know, is part of a Laureate International University and a private for-profit institution. That's a rare thing in our country. We do have private universities, but we don't have ones that purely uh, operate for profit but the Torrens University as one of those, is one of those. So as a Table B 
uh, provider, Torrens would be eligible for research block grants, postgraduate scholarships and a range of other forms of public funding, and that is concerning. And one has to ask, when you look at an idea like this being put on the table, whether the government has learnt nothing at all from the complete debacle of the vet sector. Public funding and for-profit educations simply do not mix. The evidence is in, and uh, we know that the situation within the vet sector is not working. The incentives don't line up for the chief outcomes of the higher education sector. Qualifications, training, research, teaching are so difficult to quantify and diverse in their qualities that the, pro that the profit incentive, even with uh, regulation, invariably leads to rorting. That's been the uh, experience in the vet sector. And now we're potentially talking about opening up Pandora's box and going down this pathway in our university sector. Look at how the dodgy RTOs in the vet sector have cut every corner to maximise profit at the expense of education outcomes. What confidence does the government have that this won't happen within our university sector once we open down that door? Well, once we open that door, once we start going down that path. And the inquiry into the for-profit vet sector by the Education and Employment References Committee found that expanding a demand-driven entitlement to the private sector to access Commonwealth subsidies for bachelor and sub-bachelor degree programs would entail unacceptable risk to the reputation of Australian higher education sector, unacceptable risk to the reputation of Australia's higher education sector. And so again, you know, if one considers what's been unfolding within the, uh, the VET sector, one has to wonder why the government are contemplating going down this path. I'm referring to a system that Prime Minister Malcolm Turnbull has described as uh, scandalous, absolutely scandalous, he says. Well, this is potentially going to be opened up to uh, our university sector as well if we open this Pandora's box, if we go down this path. So, while we acknowledge that the bill does not yet expand access to help loans for Torrens students and it's not suggesting Torrens University be classed as a Table A provider, has the Minister actually considered the evidence as to what effect for-profit entities receiving public grants will, be on the, will have on the integrity of our research sector? I know Senator Dastiari says the Labor Party don't support going down that path, but the, the worry is, of course, once we open the door to this, we're, um, we're on that trajectory, and that's a worrying thing for the higher education sector within this country. The question must also be asked, if the money is available to expand grants for um, profit providers, why not instead put this money back into the public system? We know our public universities have a world-class research reputation. We know that they have multiple safeguards that protect the integrity of research. And we know that, unlike for-profit providers, they will in fact spend all their money in res on research instead of skimming stuff off to try and make uh, private uh, profits. So why wouldn't we be giving the money to them? We know that there's quality control in place. Putting public revenue into an established public university system is a smarter and safer way to spend taxpayer money and to avoid the kind of scandal, waste and exploitation that has characterised the VET sector, initiated by the Labor Party, continue to be implemented by the Liberal Party. We need to avoid that system from uh, expanding into our universities. So if we could go back in time to before the National Partnership Agreement that locked in the contestability model for VET and TAFE, to before the rollout of the VET fee help to for-profit providers and put a stop to the appalling RTO behaviour that is plaguing the VET sector, of course we would do that. Of course we'd do that. You know, most people, um, I'm sure, in this place would recognise that if they had the time again, they maybe wouldn't have gone down that path. Well, we have an opportunity today to take a different path when it comes to higher education. So today we do have an opportunity to prevent that first encroachment of the private contestability logic onto our university system. We don't want to bring that kind of modus operandi into our universities. As I said uh, from the outset, there are many things that the Greens do like about this bill. We support the expansion of help to select New Zealand citizens. We do support the regulatory adjustment to TEXA and we support the increased funding for the ARC. 
But as long as this bill sets the precedent for public funding of the for-profit business model in the university sector, then we do have some concerns. And I call on this uh, chamber to support the Greens' amendment to remove Schedule 2. Thank you. Thank you,